Oh no, Nvidia could be in for some big trouble. Let's talk about it. But before that, this video is brought to you by Honey. Do you want to save some money, Honey? Well, so do I. Great news, Honey has you covered. What is Honey? Well, Honey is a browser extension that can save you a ton of money when you're shopping online. Not only does it search through every single coupon it can possibly find, but it does it much faster than you ever could, meaning that every single time you go to purchase something online, that's right, Honey has your back and is checking everywhere under every single nook and cranny to find every single last dollar or cent that it can save you on your purchase. In fact, I used Honey recently when I went to go see some family members and it saved me around 25% off my plane ticket because it found a coupon I didn't even know about. So if you're interested in purchasing items online, I highly, highly suggest downloading Honey, guys. I have already saved and I'm not kidding, probably upwards of 100 plus dollars using it and I've only been using it for a couple of weeks at this point. So what are you waiting for? Go click the link in the description below and download Honey today to start saving a ton of money. All right, so the first story I want to go over with you guys today actually has to do with some new GPUs coming to the RTX 40 series very soon. Now, this information I got from videocards.com, and I will have them linked in the description below. But according to their article, it looks like we could be seeing a number of new RTX 40 series GPUs, specifically under the name of RTX 4070. But fear not, this is some information you might not have heard before, as it looks like not only could we be getting one version of the RTX 4070, but many versions of the 4070 with different amounts of memory. That's right, Nvidia has lost their mind once again, as it looks like according to a leak that happened over on Gigabyte's website, we're looking at a 12 gigabyte version, a 10 gigabyte version, and get this, a 16 gigabyte version. Now, is this actually going to happen? That's a good question because honestly, 16 gigabytes doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. And there definitely could be a possibility here where maybe Gigabyte accidentally confused the 4080 with the 4070. That could have happened and this could just be a mistake. But if this isn't a mistake, and we're looking at a 16 gigabyte version as well. That's definitely going to be very, very interesting, assuming this isn't some sort of mobile version, because if this is a desktop version with 16 gigabytes, that means that we're getting a 256 bit version of the RTX 4070. And even if the memory itself is clocked much lower, we're still going to be talking about a much higher amount of memory bandwidth on the RTX 4070. So that's right, it's going to be 8K time baby no probably not it's still probably not gonna have the shader grunt required to really be maxing out games at high refresh rates at 4k however it will make it possibly a good entry level 4k card if it does have that really high amount of memory bandwidth now on the other hand if it's 12 gigabytes i still think that's going to be really good if there is a 12 gigabyte version because again you will be getting much higher memory bandwidth making it a better entry level 4k card however if the 10 gigabyte version is the only version Version we end up getting well then that is probably going to make this more of a 1440p card because between the lower bandwidth and the lower amount of memory it probably just won't quite cut it as a 4k card so here's hoping that we at least get a 12 gigabyte version and maybe just maybe if you were good enough on santa's lap and you didn't wriggle around too much when he started grabbing at you he might deliver a 16 gigabyte version as well but only time will tell and let's go ahead and move on to the second story now and this one's going to be a little bit interesting guys once again this comes from videocards.com and it looks like the razor blade 18 equipped with the rtx 4090 was actually able to beat the desktop rtx 3090 ti so if you're ordering a brand new laptop with an rtx 40 series card specifically the 4090 not only is it going to be incredibly powerful but for the first time that i can remember it looks like a mobile part is finally going to be bringing the spanking to the last generation flat flagship desktop part. So yeah, that is going to be an incredibly powerful laptop. So for those of you out there who decided to remortgage your house and sell your car and you want to buy a $4,500 laptop, yes, it looks like it's going to be incredibly powerful. 
but will it be worth it? Eh, probably only if it has an OLED glossy screen. But now moving on to the final story, and this one's gonna be a doozy, guys. It looks like Nvidia could be in for some serious trouble as AMD is preparing a new update that could definitely be a big problem for Nvidia. What am I talking about? Well, it looks like FSR2 is getting a huge update that is gonna improve a ton of issues that it had. And to be honest with you guys, FSR2 already had some advantages over DLSS that were already causing trouble for Nvidia. First of all, it is completely open source. And second of all, in some games, I've noticed that FSR2, while it might not have the same performance uplift, or maybe it doesn't have quite the amount of clarity as DLSS2 can have, I have noticed it has less issues with temporal stuff, such as maybe ghosting behind objects when multiple different objects are layered on top of each other. And that can be a big issue for DLSS in some games. Now, admittedly, DLSS is just straight up better in a lot of games, but again, that major issue is something that NVIDIA needs to work on. And with these updates here, which from this videocards.com article, it's stating that apparently not only will it have a wider compatibility with HDR, but it'll also reduce the fizzing artifacts as well as apparently it should have improved temporal stability, allowing for FSR 2.2, what they're calling it, to have just overall much better image quality. And again, this could seriously cause some trouble for NVIDIA when they're trying to push their DLSS technology because when you have an open source alternative like FSR2 and it continues to get massive improvements like this 2.2 version, not only is that gonna be a good thing for gamers as a whole to have more options on the table with better image quality, but unfortunately for NVIDIA, it's also gonna make it easier for developers to choose FSR2 over DLSS if it's easier to implement. And speaking of easier to implement, another update from this is that apparently, according to video cards, quote, another feature that has been implemented is a new API debugger. This should simplify the integration process for game developers, although the transition from 2.0 to 2.1 or 2.2 is much easier than coming from FSR1. So there you have it. It looks like if you're a developer out there, FSR2 is not only becoming higher quality, but even easier to implement. And I do suspect that over time, much much like FreeSync, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if FSR2 ends up actually overtaking DLSS when it comes to popularity. But hey, only time will tell whether or not AMD or Nvidia will end up winning. But either way you look at it, the consumer is going to be the one who comes ahead. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that Nvidia or AMD has the better DLSS slash FSR implementation? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.